when a train is speeding up, the locomotive applies a force to the car directly behind it through the coupling. So we can treat that as a tension force. And then that car, uh, in turn, provides a force to the car behind it through its coupling. So um, here we have a realistic acceleration for a train, uh, 0.28 meters per second squared. This is about uh, one kilometer per hour per second. And this is based on something that I Googled. So if you're a big fan of trains and I'm off on that, sorry about that. Um, so in this example, we have a very short train. Uh, we have one coal car and then the caboose. And we want to know the tensions in the links between the two cars as the train speeds up. So the coal car here, uh, car A, has a mass of 3,000 kilograms, and the caboose has a mass of 2,000 kilograms. So the first, uh, so uh, yeah, we're, we're told to ignore the friction between the car, these cars and the track. Of course, the locomotive has to have some friction between its wheels and the track so that it can speed up, but we're not worried about the forces on the locomotive, we're worried about the, the tensions. Okay, so the first thing that we want to do is, is draw the free body diagrams for the two cars. So um, we can start with, with car B, just because it's to the left. And so uh, we're going to have a force of gravity down, so I'll call it F sub G B. We're going to have a normal force up, F sub N B. Uh, we're going to have a tension, so um, we need some labeling here, so I'll call that uh, link 2 and then link 1 there. So there's going to be, we'll call that a force of tension 2. And then because we're uh, neglecting friction, there is no backward force or force to the left on, on car B. And then on car A, we're going to have, in the vertical direction, a similar situation. So we've got a force of gravity down, a normal force up, and then we'll have a force of tension we'll call from link 1 to the right, and then a force of tension from link 2 to the left. Right, so we can't, uh, that's, that's very important to remember that we have that, that force of tension uh, pulling backwards, right, because, uh, and that's from Newton's third law. Right, so car A, we would say, is pulling car B forward, but that means it feels a backward pull from car B. And one thing that I like to do, this is not necessarily a standard uh, thing, but, well, we already have these, uh, in this case, I've already labeled these with the same label here, but you can also put a little X through those arrows so that I know that these forces are paired by Newton's third law. Right, so that's Newton's third law pairs. Which means that those forces are going to be equal in magnitude but opposite in direction. So anytime you have uh, two different objects that are interacting with forces, there's always going to be uh, exactly one pair of forces that's paired by Newton's third law. Now, you might look at, you know, a common mistake that people make is say, uh, especially with labeling, they, they would look at that and say, well, here's a force of gravity and here's a force of gravity. Um, but they're, they're not the same. Those ones are uh, same type of force, right? They're both gravity but they are not paired. And in this case, because the uh, cars are of different masses, they're going to have different values. Because right? you calculate mass times acceleration due to gravity, uh, those, those forces are, are going to be, have different values. So they're of the same kind, but they are not paired. So that's why I have to make sure that there's a, a difference in labeling, F sub GA and F sub GB, so that when I write down my equations, I don't mix them up. Now, in this case, uh, if we look, we, we can, you know, just for... Um, you know, completeness, we can write down a, a net force equation or Newton's second law equation in the vertical direction, but all it's going to tell us is that the normal force balances out the force of gravity. Right, so, I mean, I, I guess for, let's, if I'm saying something for the sake of completeness, I might as well write it down. Right, so if I, uh, let's start with, um, so Newton's second law for, um, we'll start with B, just to keep this uh, kind of parallel structure here. So um, in the Y direction, we have F net Y arrow. Right? So the normal force is positive. The force of gravity is negative because it points down. Um, and then what is that equal to? Remember, you always have to have an equals. And that is equal to the mass of the train times the acceleration in that direction. Well, it's not accelerating in the vertical direction, so that's just going to be zero. So all it tells me is that those two forces are going to be balanced. So the X direction is where things are interesting. So we can say F net in the X direction well, there's only one force. It's that uh, force of tension, F sub T2, and that's going to be equal to the mass of that object, so that's mass B times its acceleration. Now, because these two objects are tied together, uh, you know, we treat ropes as things that don't stretch when there's a, when there's a tension on them. Here, they're train couplers, so they really aren't going to stretch. Right? So the acceleration of the two cars uh, is going to be the same. Right? So the train uh, accelerates all together. Okay, so uh, I'll go ahead and put that in a dotted box because that's uh, one equation that I can now work with. Right? Uh, and now let's look at uh, Newton's second law for train A. So again, in the y direction, we can say F net y is going to be the normal force A is positive, the force of gravity A is negative, and then we have that equal to zero because there's no acceleration in that direction. Okay, we're not going to do anything with that, um, but it's there in case we ever need it. All right, so the net force in the x direction here is going to be 
Um, we've got FT1 points to the right, which is the positive direction, and FT2 uh, points to the left, which is the negative direction, so we can go ahead and write it down with those uh, signs, and then that's going to be equal to MA times the acceleration. Right, so you can see I haven't, I haven't jumped to any conclusions here. The only thing that I'm saying is the same between the two is I'm saying I know that the acceleration is the same for both uh, cars because they are tied together, and I know that that uh, FT2, that Newton's third law pair, um, is the same in both equations. Okay, so um, now let me, uh, so those two equations in boxes are what I'm going to work with. So I can uh, copy those and bring them down here. So I have uh, two equations and two unknowns. In this case, it's the two uh, forces of tension that I don't know because I know the acceleration. A lot of times in these problems, you'll know, the, you'll know at least some of the forces, uh, but what you don't know is the acceleration. Now, the first thing that you should do when you have these uh, two equations with two unknowns is see if either of them can be solved right away. And in this case, I know everything on the right-hand side of that equation. I know the mass of B and I know the acceleration. Right, so B has a mass of 2,000 kilograms and the acceleration is 0 0.28 meters per second squared. And uh, we can do that calculation. That gives me a force of 560 newtons. So now I know one of the tensions, and so now I can uh, use that in my other equation. But first, let me solve that for uh, the other unknown tension. So I add FT2 to both sides. And that's going to tell me that the force of tension 1 is equal to FT2 plus the mass of A times the acceleration. So that's 560 newtons plus... Um, it was 3,000 kilograms times 0 0.28 meters per second squared. So that's going to give me that FT1 is 1,400 newtons. All right there, so I solved for both unknowns. Now we can see that the, the tension uh, is not the same between the two. And you can think of that if you go back to the picture and you say, well, the locomotive then must be pulling on the cars with a force of uh, 1,400 newtons. But... Um, it, that force of tension 1 has to pull both the cars. The force of tension 2 only has to pull the second car, so it makes sense that that would be a uh, smaller value.